I should have finished chewing before I started this sentence. I always do that. Hey, hey, hey I'm Lisa. Imagine fluffy yet crunchy, hot and spiced, golden fritters of Middle Eastern deliciousness. Yep, I'm talking falafel. This is Walking Up an Appetite and it's pouring. A falafel is a deep fried patty or ball made of chickpeas or broad beans and flavoured with herbs and spices. Many countries claim it part of their national cuisine from Israel to Egypt, from Lebanon to Bahrain, from Yemen to Iraq. Today I'm walking the very wet streets of Sydney, Australia to explore very different falafel places, each with freshly fried, fantastically flavoursome falafel. We're going to explore Lebanese, Egyptian and Israeli falafel. Yum! I'm starting out on Bidjigal land. I am in Punchbowl in the southwest of Sydney. And do you know that over 25% of people here have Lebanese heritage? What better place to find authentic Lebanese falafel? My mouth's watering, time to go. Falafel is a global street food. Falafel balls, salad, sauce, all wrapped in a flatbread. And it's been one of my favourite things to eat since I was about eight. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. What I look for in a good falafel wrap, one, the flatbread, it's got to be soft and fresh, yet at the same time, it's got to be strong enough to hold all the filling that I want crammed inside. Two, the falafel balls have to be hot and freshly fried and I want lots of them. Three, salad is essential, pickles are nice. And four, most importantly, generous sourcing. If you're now craving a truly memorable falafel as I am, follow me. And then stick around, we're gonna go back to my kitchen where I'm going to be joined by a friend of mine who is a master falafel maker. So we can all be frying our own in no time. So I've made it here to our first stop. I'm at Al Yasmin in Punchbowl and it's good to get out of the rain. Um, it's taken me uh, 3,709 steps to get here. This is an authentic neighbourhood family style restaurant and I don't know about you but I am so ready for my first falafel. I have been trying so many Lebanese falafels these last months from east to west. And what I love is that all of them come in this gorgeous little wrapping, like it's so cute with this little twisted top. This is takeaway food, but I know we've got lots of kilometers to walk today, so I'm gonna sit down and eat this one. So this has Lebanese flatbread and inside is all the goodness. And you can see the falafel balls. Remember, they've gotta be squished a little bit and they've gotta be well distributed because you don't wanna to have to go on a falafel hunt through your falafel, right? Let's go, first bite. So you can see inside what I've got, lots of falafel balls. They're really generous. I've got lettuce and tomato, which are pretty much standard in a Lebanese falafel and tahina sauce. But then I've also got some pickled turnips and some pickled cucumber, which I just love. This is a really, really nice falafel. And we get the chance to look at the falafel balls themselves. Look how deeply golden they are. They are super crisp on the outside. And let's have a look inside. Mmm, that's good. Inside, it is fluffy and a bit crumbly, exactly what you want. This is made of chickpeas and it's flavoured with ground cumin and coriander and it's got some fresh herbs and it's got a taste of an onion and a hint of garlic. I just love it. It's a really good Lebanese falafel ball. The thing that makes a Lebanese falafel wrap is the Lebanese flatbread and it's really interesting because it's soft and can be rolled and filled really easily, but it's sort of got this very interesting stretchy feel to it, which I guess helps hold all the filling in. And it's got a really good chew to it, which as you know me by now, I really love. At most of the Lebanese restaurants I've visited, this has been in the fridge. It's called Iran and it is a yogurt drink. And what I found out since then is that it's one of the most popular drinks in Lebanon. I've never had it before, so Let's see how we go. I run. 
Oh, that's delicious. It's actually exactly what I thought it would be. It's very cooling. It's very yogurty, but it's not thick at all. I think I thought it would be thicker. It's actually quite lovely. It's the perfect thing to drink with a falafel. So come to Al Yasmin Punch Bowl for the excellent Lebanese falafel and stay for the Iran. Well, after walking a few k's in the rain, I gotta say, I'm really happy the sun's come out. So good. With something that's found absolutely everywhere across the Middle East, it's really not surprising that its origins are, let's say, hotly contested. It's thought to have started in the 1820s in Alexandria, Egypt, where falafels were made from the staple of the Egyptian diet, fava beans. Then over time, it migrated right across the Middle East and everyone sort of made it their own and it took on the local agriculture. For example, chickpeas became more prevalent than fava beans. Historian Dr. Alexander Lee summed it up so perfectly when he said, Despite all the debates about where it came from and whose it really is, what matters is that it is something we all share and that we can all enjoy. If we keep eating it with that in mind, falafel can perhaps bring us together rather than keeping us apart. So it's been quite the hike to get here. It's been raining on and off. Honestly, my hair's pretty much curly. We've walked through Lakemba and past Plempton Park and I'm here in Canterbury, standing over the Cooks River. Sadly, there's not gonna be any swimming today. I've done about 13 and a half thousand steps to get here on the way to our next stop, which is Newtown. So I've made it to Cairo Takeaway in Newtown and it's been a hell of a walk today, I've got to say. It's been pouring on and off and it's been a long one. It's 22,000 plus steps today, which is a total of about 15 Ks. This is a really well-known place in the area. The locals swarm here and it's also another delicious draw card to the amazing Newtown. What I'm particularly excited about is that the menu here is inspired by Egyptian home cooking and street food, largely vegetarian, and their falafel is outstanding. It's actually quite mesmerizing to stand here and watch them fry these gorgeous green sesame encrusted falafel and then stuff them piping hot into this Lebanese flatbread. So same bread as the Lebanese falafel, but done differently. This is stuffed rather than rolled. And they've got in here fresh cucumber, fresh tomato, bit of rocket, then the falafel straight from the fryer. They've added pickled turnips, pickled cucumbers, and chilies, and lots of their tahina sauce, which has got a few secret ingredients, including lemon and mint and vinegar. This looks so, so good. I really love these falafel. They're so green because they're made of both fava beans and chickpeas, and they are loaded with fresh herbs, parsley, dill, coriander, green shallots. It's just magic taking a bite of this. And then there's the ground spices, cumin and coriander. And I feel like the flatbread here is really like the vehicle to hold all this amazing goodness inside. The falafel balls are so well flavored and substantial super crisp on the outside, really crusty as you want them, and crumbly and, and delicious inside with such good spice. I just want to have a little closer look at the falafel balls. Look how golden brown they are, encrusted with sesame seeds, fried to perfection. Just gonna have a bite to show you inside. Yum. So much flavor, it's unbelievable. The inside of these is so vibrant and green and if you compare it to the Lebanese falafel that we had it's a completely different thing both good but different I got to finish this one oh. 
So I have been to Egypt once and it was equally fascinating and delicious. And one of the food highlights for me was I was on a tour and we were in the city square and there was a stall selling koshery. And I had it for the first time, this incredible combo of lentils and noodles and chickpeas with this tomato salsa. They've got it here. And I'm so excited to have it taking me back to the streets of Cairo. Mm. That's delicious. So come to Cairo Takeaway for the incredible Egyptian falafel pockets and stay, definitely stay, for a bowl of this koshery. It has been a sensational and rainy day in Sydney today and I've walked from southwest to inner west exploring two delicious falafels and you know what, we need a third. But instead of walking to the third place, the third place is gonna to come to us. I'm so excited to welcome a guy who is a Sydney chef born in Israel and is so well known for making the most outstanding, both refined and homestyle Middle Eastern and Mediterranean food. His current restaurant, Kepos Street Kitchen, has been revered in Sydney's food circles for years. Not only is he a restaurateur, but he can cater your wedding, he can fill your fridge at home, and he can teach you how to cook. I am so thrilled to welcome Michael Rantisi to my kitchen. <laughs> There's one falafel that's missing from today's lot, and that is the Israeli falafel. So, Michael. I grew up in Tel Aviv for a Greek Orthodox family, and you get exposed to so much, especially all that amazing street food, mm. and falafel is one of them. Like, surprisingly, I never actually cooked falafel till I came to Australia. It's crazy. <laughs> because I, I never had the need for it. Why yeah. would you actually cook a falafel when you live in a place where there is just so much magical falafel? When I was about eight, I went to Israel for the first time and had my first falafel. And I still remember biting through that soft pita, landing on those hot, crunchy falafel balls, all the salad, the sauce. It was so memorable. Mm. And then went back on my honeymoon years later and Danny's Israeli uncle took us to his favourite place. And then I was a bit older, I understood the nuances of the cabbage and the pickles and the tahina. It's such a thing and you've brought that to Sydney through Kepa Street Kitchen. Kepa Street Kitchen started from an inspiration of cooking at home. So, you know, as a chef, you train French and Italian cuisine and that's all you do all your life. And when you have guests over for dinner, you want to cook food that you believe in. That's what made it a bit more exciting to try to create one that is kind of a Sydney falafel, but still with a heritage and a background to kind of where I come from. Which is why I'm so excited that Michael is going to share that recipe with us today. We are going to make Kepa Street Kitchen's Tel Aviv falafel. I'm going to make the pita. Michael's going to do all the rest. So I'm just going to mix the salt and the flour. Make a little well in here. Yeast and sugar, and a little bit of water. Mix it all together. All right, let's put the rest in. Perfect. And I'm just gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes just to make sure the yeast is active. So it's been 10 minutes and it's lovely and foamy. So I'm just gonna bring the flour in. So this is a coming together. It's a really shaggy dough now, and I'm just going to tip it. See, I need him here all the time. This is brilliant. Look how well you do that. This is an art to, to see Michael knead like this. It's just mesmerizing to watch and I think this is going to be the best batch ever. So we're kneading it till it becomes a smooth, springy dough. Is that how you'd describe it? I would say yeah. so. Okay, so now we need to just divide this into 12. And I just roll it into a small circle. They're really tiny, the ones that I'm making, much smaller than a regular pita. So I'm flouring the tea towel and then we're just gonna lay them out like this. So I'm just gonna sprinkle these with a bit of flour and cover them with another tea towel and let them rise for about an hour, give or take. I can't wait for them to be baked. Also, mm. also I can already taste them. Deliciousness. Okay, now you've really gotta concentrate because Michael, king of falafel in Sydney, is going to make his falafel in this kitchen. What I love with falafel is that it has so much debate, doesn't it? Everybody does it so differently. So what I love doing is soaking the chickpeas and the fava the night before. And onion is 
a beautiful ingredient that has so much sugar. So the caramelization and the crispness of the falafel from outside is actually phenomenal. Garlic, obviously. And I love adding chili into my falafel because it has this back hint of nice spice to it. A lot of fresh parsley. We're really learning all the secrets here. How beautiful is this coriander? It's fantastic. Oh, the smell of that is so fresh and fragrant. Oh, it's wait unbelievable. Wait till they fried. The home will just be... I just cannot wait. You need to be able to hold it together. You can see it's still not holding the shape together. So it requires a little bit more. My God, now the mix looks fantastic, Lisa. Thank you. It was all my doing. It definitely was yeah. all you're doing. Now we want to do our seasoning. I love adding sesame seeds because they have a little kind of like jeweled on the falafel. This is cumin and coriander powder. Yeah. And all we're missing is the salt, Lisa. And can you see how beautiful and green and lush and it's holding its shape together? Mm. Let's put it aside. So tell me what you're going to put in your perfect falafel wrap. I love falafel, trina and cabbage. I love the whole kind of creamy, acidity, crunch texture for my ideal falafel pita. Okay, so let's do the pickled cabbage. Over here is just water, vinegar and a little bit of sugar. I like adding the salt in my cabbage. And what I actually do, I get the liquid out of it a little bit. Just pour it over. Beautiful. How long do you leave this for now? I would leave it till it cools down. You can eat it the same day, but I love the fermentation after three, four days. Okay, so you just need to hang around for three days till it's ready. No, no. jokes. Joking, joking, because we've got I've one already we made prepared. another one. Of course we do. Of course we do. But I need to taste it. Go can for I? it. It's actually really crunchy, juicy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Hint of vinegar, mm -hmm. salted perfectly. I love it. It's good. Thank you. It's going to go really well in the falafel. Excellent. Okay, so let's talk the tahini sauce, or the tahini. Tahini is a very interesting ingredient and using a good quality one, obviously. So I'll leave you with all the mixing, so you will be doing all the hard work this time. I'm adding fresh garlic into it. A whole lemon, I like it very acidic. Now we're gonna add really cold water. Salt, obviously, and now you just have to be very careful not adding too much liquid and being okay, able to control it. So I don't want it too runny. I wanted a texture yeah. of kind of like a dip. When you put it in the fridge, it will go a little bit more solid. Yeah, go for it. Delicious. Mm. Nice, creamy. Lemon, mm. garlic, sesame. It's just so good. And it will work really well because we have all the... <laughs> <laughs> I want to run away with this bowl. Mm. It's really good. It's delicious. Mm. It's nice so and creamy delicious. and easy. Yeah. So these have puffed up beautifully. So soft and puffy. And I'm just gonna put them straight into my hot oven and the hot tray. Puffed up beautifully, tiny bit golden on the bottom, soft, fresh and hot. Mm, so good. Most exciting part of the day. We are frying the falafel now. I can't wait, Michael. So I use this beautiful falafel spoon. You can buy them online. We're frying enough falafels for the two of us. Yeah, so what do we need, like five each? Probably 10. Each? Probably. <laughs> just to be greedy on the greedy <laughs> yeah. side. They just look so pretty. Unbelievable. Thank you. Oh, how good. Look how green that is inside. It's unbelievable. Mm. Hell, that's delicious. It's unreal. The crust he's got on this is extraordinary. So thin and crisp. Sesame really adds something to it. And inside is so green and fluffy and fresh. Mm. This is like my dream come true. You are in my kitchen having just fried the falafels and now you're going to make me a falafel wrap. So mine, what I love is a lot of that inside. Yeah. 
get our one sauce. One falafel squashing it all in. Yep. I love adding a bit of fresh tomato as well. Yeah. Just some salt because I can. Cabbage. And more sauce. I love that. All right, here we go. Mm. I absolutely love that. The bread's lovely and soft, the pita, it's soft. And then you've got that hot, crisp thing inside with all that flavor. It's so good, and this tomato, which is sweet, and the cabbage, which is just adds that tanginess and the acidity. It's very good, and the sauce. Just want to bathe in that sauce. Cheers to Cheers falafel. to falafel. Mm. It's so messy, isn't it? Actually, it is really good. It's good, isn't it? Mm. So this is our Tel Aviv style falafel wrap, and it is so bloody good. It has been such a pleasure to have you in my kitchen. Thank you for having me. Till next time. Look forward. You'll find all the recipes and links to the fabulous locations in the notes under the video. Remember, check out the whole channel and don't forget to like and subscribe as I walk across Greater Sydney in search of the most delicious food. And thank you for walking up an appetite with me today. And remember, there's got to be joy in the journey and deliciousness in the destination.